The January transfer window has come and gone with some big moves pulling through and some others failing to happen. 2018 is a loaded year for Nigerian sports and sadly, Nigeria has lost a sports administrator in Digitunumbu. Welcome to Ban Sports. Welcome back. Um, Israel Ojoko, let's start from um, the January transfer windows. Um, we've seen some moves happening this January transfer window. How impressed were you with these uh, um, businesses that these clubs have taken this period? Uh, well, I'm not too impressed because there's no um, that big uh, move. You know, we all expect to see uh, you know, during uh, January transfer or even any other transfer window. Remember the year um, uh, or Sazio or Devinge moved <laughs> all the way, you know, uh, from uh, West Brom uh, trying to uh, force a move uh, to Queens Park Rangers. You know, we remember you know some big, big you know uh, transfers like that. But maybe, maybe, maybe least, there's recession in Europe. Perhaps <laughs> there's, there's recession in Europe, but you know, all the same. Uh, some moves were made. Alexis Sanchez, uh, you know, uh, moved, uh, you know, from uh, Arsenal to Manchester uh, United. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, is now earning three hundred and fifty uh, thousand pounds per week. That's massive. Uh, you know, <laughs> the highest, uh, you know, earning uh, player in the uh, English uh, Premier League right now, beating um, uh, Wayne Rooney's uh, record when he was uh, at Manchester United when uh, Rooney was earning uh, three hundred thousand uh, pounds per week. Uh, so uh, he, one, uh, there was a swap deal with uh, Mkhitaryan. You know. The Mitan was is good was went the other way uh, to Arsenal uh, from Manchester United. So um, another move uh, was that of Coutinho. Uh, we all remember uh, Coutinho uh, trying to move in the summer, but uh, you know Liverpool was like, no, this guy is not going anywhere. But right now, uh, uh, Liverpool has seen that uh, you know this guy wants to play in uh, Barcelona. It has been his dream uh, club, and you know they they keeping him uh, for too long. Uh, will not help the guys' uh, career, and of course, uh, right. they are allowing to join uh, Barcelona for eighty-one uh, million pounds, you know, uh, from um, Liverpool. So th those are the uh, part of the big, uh, you know, transfer in the world. Uh, but, but, but I think some Nigerian players also made a move, move uh, even if it's, uh, at least loan deals. I thought, uh, I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought exactly. <laughs> market no good, but <laughs> <this>. market <laughs> no good. But at least I thought, I thought, I thought exactly. so our guys move. Yeah, um, talking about a brand new day. I, I I have forgotten Brandy Day. I mean, I I must be sincere with you. That is the reason why he wants to come where people will see him. I just saw I just saw the news. Day has you know uh, moved on loan uh, from uh, Tianjin Teda in um, China to uh, Malaga in uh, in Spain. Quite a good one, you know. He coming uh, to play in the La, in La Liga after uh, so much. Um, should I say he has been buried? You know, uh, his career, you know, and we've not seen him play uh, for quite uh, some time now. And of course, uh, another one was that of Ahmed Musa. You know, Ahmed Musa um, returning to CSK Moscow, where, he, where, he, <laughs> where he came from in 2016, uh, joining uh, Leicester City for 16 uh, million. Uh, a club record, uh, you know, uh, deal that year uh, for Leicester City, and of course, uh, you know, after his first season in Leicester City, uh, after that, I think um, Ahmed Musa was a flop, or he is a flop in Leicester City, and of course, yeah, he has left uh, to return uh, to CSK in Moscow. We, 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 we hope to see him play uh, football. Uh, the World Cup is coming. The World Cup will be played in Russia, so I think he's going to, you know, uh, sweep the room, <laughs> uh, prepare, you know, the whole place for yeah. the Super Eagles to come uh, for, for the World Cup. Yeah, I, I think one of the things Raw said about this move is the fact that it's going to endear Nigeria to the fans in Russia. Of course, when they see Ahmed Musa, they, they, they get used to him. If you look at the game we played against Argentina, that's the friendly um, when Brian the one came in, it had an effect, sort of. We should, we should be able to get sympathy from, from Russian yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ahmed Musa played for quite some years in, in, in Russia before uh, you know, you know, heading to, to England. So, uh, Ahmed Musa is, is a big name, you know, uh, in, in Russia. He has done so much, you know, uh, in the Russian league. And, of course, uh, he's, he returning there, I think, is a big one. It will help the Super Eagles, of course. If he's, he now score during this, uh, you know, uh, loan, six months uh, loan in uh, CSK Moscow, if he score good and great great goals, of course, you know, the fans will like him. And, of course, that... that, that that will bring the fans, you know, uh, to love the Super Eagles and, of course, the drum uh, support for the Super Eagles uh, when the World Cup kicks off. Yeah, drum support for the Super Eagles when the World Cup kicks, kicks off. Um, let's, uh, we look, by the end of the season, we will look at the businesses that these teams have done. Uh, maybe it's going to be money well spent or have the bots in, uh, have the bots a bad market. Uh, uh, exactly. <laughs> um, let's go on a quick break. When we return back, um, we'll serve you more on our menu today.
Welcome back. Israel, um, let's look at, look at um, the Chan um, team that we have in Morocco. Do you think we have any World Cup material in that team? Well, uh, World Cup material uh, from, the from, from, the, from their performance. From the Super Do you think team. any one of them deserves a call-up to the main Super Eagles team to yes. go to Russia? Yes, I think one of them deserves it. <laughs> it <laughs> crazy. <No>. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I, I think everybody already knows, knows that think, okay. Shiku, so if, I, there's I gonna, if there's anybody that will join him for a possible chance, who would you be picking? I'm if, not picking anybody. Wow, from that team, I, I, I am. They have they, they, they qualify for the semi final for the first for the second time, but I'm not impressed uh, with it with the team. Uh, they've improved from the first game. I mean, I, I I won't take that away from them. They've improved from the first game, uh, the second game, the third game, and you know, uh, m moving forward like that. But we are talking about playing like a team. We are talking about scoring goals. We are talking about you understanding what football is on the pitch. We are talking about you having chances and making use of it. You play with hunger, with test, and show that you know uh, you, you, you've learned something from a coach before coming to the pitch. Not this. Uh, uh, we, we just speak ourselves and everybody just okay. More, more play sets. This is not set. This team are playing like sets. So none of these guys, as far as I'm concerned, deserve a call up to the World Cup. Maybe not in 20, 2018. 2022, maybe, if they if if they have improved. But for what I've seen in Morocco from the uh, Super Eagles team there uh, right now, except Pikachu Izenwa, if you ask me, I would say Salisu Yusuf does not deserve to be at, at the World Cup. No, he's the coach and I look at what these guys are doing. I was, Honestly, I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm, Israel has given his thought about the Chan Eagles and he says apart from Ikechuku Izenwa. No one deserves to go to Russia. Um, we'd like to hear from you fans out there if you think anybody deserves to be part of the Super Eagles team to Russia. Of course, let's look at the 2018 calendar. We have so much activities lined up for Nigerian sports. Um, which of these activities catch your fan, uh, fancy? Well, uh, uh, there, there are a lot of them uh, beginning from the Lagos City Marathon. <laughs> of course, uh, you know, it's one of the uh, major events uh, uh, in Nigeria uh, for the year 2018. And uh, after that, we'll, we will be having uh the wrestling championship in port harcourt oh, uh, yeah still in february so uh 7th to 11th uh three camps have been opened uh for, you know for the guys who train in um uh in port harcourt in Bayesa, yeah. and of course in akure in hondo state so uh, the women team the men's team they are training you know ahead of uh, the championship and of course uh, another one is the africa senior athletics championship asaba uh, 2018 too. Another one is coming up in in, in August. So, so and then the Commonwealth uh, game too is coming up. Uh, you know in in the year 2018. So massive events here. You know our uh, 14 Nigeria. All they need to go to do is go there, win laurels for your country. Of course, massive event for Nigeria. And of course, the Russia 2018 is the biggest of them all. And we are hoping that Nigeria will do well in that tournament. Let's go for a quick break. When we return, join us for the last segment of this edition. Welcome back and welcome to the last segment for today's edition, um, quite um, emotional segment. Um, first, we have to condole with our co-presenter here who lost his mother in the course of the year. And of course, um, the big one, the Nigerian sports um, circles losing um, the Tunumbu. Israel, you were at the um, final barrier service for Tunumbu. What, 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 how was it for you? Uh, quite emotional, you know. Um coming from uh, the experience of uh, my own mom and then you know uh, coming in to cover the uh, service of songs for the digital uh the one everybody call friend the one they all call a brother the one everybody call you know a, a benefactor uh, you know so much uh, at the city of david uh, at the Dean christian church of god in victoria island it was so emotional you need to see the crowd in the hall filled to the brim outside field to the brim tears the mother the wife was crying uh, the kids and all that you know uh, fine gentleman uh, you know dying at the age of uh, 53 uh, with so much you know uh, to give to the society he has given to the society but he still has uh, so much to still offer but unfortunately uh, the creator said this is how uh, it's gonna be this is how I mean he has done his own part uh, you know, on, on, on earth, we all remember he died uh, after slump, you know, you know, on, on, on the pitch of play during the novelty uh, game in, in, in Lagos. So, 
uh, quite an emotional one. The vice president's wife, uh, Dolakpo, was there. Um, uh, Ogun State uh, Governor uh, Ibukuli Amosu was there. Lagos State Governor Akin uh, Umiambodi uh, was there, and some other top, uh, you know, uh, dignitaries uh, to pay their last uh, respect to the uh, Jitunubu former uh, Lagos State Sports Commission Chairman, uh, you know, uh, former NFF uh, Executive Board Member, uh, former uh, Commissioner of uh, Commerce, you know, in, in Lagos State. Former journalist, former sportscaster, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, journalist is there. Yeah, so, so so there are so much uh, to to talk about him. Uh, you know, uh, digital. Be quite uh, sad that you know he has gone uh, for all those uh, that died in the month of uh, January, uh, which my own mom too uh, was part of. Then I say maybe our uh, uh, soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you, Israel. Um, as we wrap up this edition, I think we just have to see what people have to say about the late Deji Tinumbu, of course, as, like you said, he was a man of the people, and they have glowing tributes being paid to him. Enjoy this, as we call it a wrap, on this edition. There, there are many things to say about Deji, many, many things, but the ones that stand out, like you've heard over and over, probably heard over and over and over, and over at the ceremonies, um, his humility, Deji could work with anybody, could joke with anybody, and the second is his giving. He's a, he's a man of a class, that's number one. <laughs> He's a, he's a quiet gentleman, a journalist of the note. He was um, always humble, indeed humble to a fault, a lover of God, and uh, a very, very good friend to almost everyone, if not everyone, in this post-fraternity.